Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, Pastor Esther here. This morning, we're going to continue talking about stewardship and more specifically, how do we steward the relationship that God has given to us? That's just just a quick reminder. I want to remind us that stewarding is really the responsible, diligent and careful management of what has been given to somebody else, to someone by someone else. So our life, our relationships have been given to us by God. We don't own them. Um, we are not true uh, owners of really much of what we have in this life. God gives it to us to manage well. Um, and we are supposed to manage in a way that brings glory and honor to God. And one of the ways we do that is we manage in accordance with the word of God. So this morning, I just want to talk a little bit about a relationship that all of us experience, and that is the employer-employee relationship. Um, and, you know, there's so much that can be said about this that we can really dig into um, how we ought to live as Christians, uh, whether we find ourselves as the employee or the employer. What does the Bible have to say about this? Especially in today's day and age in 2023, where there's so much friction presently occurring in our world regarding this relationship. Um, we know that times are getting harder and coming out of the pandemic, what employees want has shifted and changed versus what employers want. And this has created a state of friction. But one of the things that is important for us as believers is that our ideologies, our perspectives on our way of living, our way of operating should never be dependent on the culture that we're in, but the truth of the word of God. Um, we have to be careful to not sway with what is in, what may be trending, um, but we must always stand firm and rooted on the word of God. You know, scripture says, be firmly rooted in the truth. And so this morning, we're going to read Ephesians chapter six, verse five uh, to nine, and see what scripture has to say about the employer employee relationship. Okay, so I want to just give a little bit of context as we read the scripture. You know, the um, the apostles, as they were writing the scripture and being inspired by the Holy Spirit to write down this truth, they were writing to the church. And so they were addressing issues that were coming up within the church. And so when uh, the Bible was written, you know, in the first century, the labor um, structure is very, was very different than what we have today. So the labor structure consisted of individuals who were slaves, um, individuals who were servants, um, hired hands. It's it's not what we have today where, you know, people went in and they had a nine to five jobs. A lot of people worked under a master and they worked with them um, as part of their normal and regular life. Um, some of them were free in the sense of they could come and go. And some of them were owned. Um, so the scripture here uses the term slaves and um in our modern times, we have such a strong per, uh, view of slavery in the sense of we only think about 18th and 19th century slavery, and specifically as Americans. But uh, slavery as a whole has been a part of much of the history of the world. Um, but usually, slaves were able to be free, and there was an understanding of a need to treat them well and even servants um so as we read the scripture i just wanted to give us a little bit of context so ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 says slaves obey your human masters with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your heart as to christ don't work only while being watched in order to please men but as slaves of christ do god's will from your heart serve with a good attitude as to the lord and not to men Knowing that whatever good each one does, slave or free, he will receive this back from the Lord. And masters, treat your slaves the same way without threatening them because you know that both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. 
Okay, so let's break this down a little bit, okay? So first and foremost, we are being instructed here that um, those who serve in as masters, meaning our employers, those who hire us and we have a responsibility to do a work onto them, we need to um, obey them with a, a fear and trembling, uh, the Holman Christian Standard Version says, but another way to uh, think about this is that we should obey them with reverence. In other words, let's treat our bosses well. Let's give them due respect for the authority and the position that they have. Um, and we are giving them this respect, not because they deserve it or they've earned it, but we're doing it as unto Christ because Jesus is our true master. Um, it goes on to say that we need to be um, workers who don't work only while we're being watched. So meaning that, you know, when your boss is on, on top of you, that's when you do your best work. Um, um, or we work just for the sake of pleasing people, but we should be consistent and diligent employees. Like whether we are being supervised or not, our work should have consistency and our work should be good. It should be done well and we should actually be working. Um, it says that we need to do this as slaves of Christ, knowing that ultimately we are servants of God. We serve Jesus Christ. And this is God's will that we must do from our heart, from our very being. Our mindset to our work has to be that I am serving God in this work. No matter what that is, whether you are a supervisor or your employee in a corporate setting, whether you are a doctor, a nurse, fireman, policeman, a teacher, um, in insurance, or even down to somebody working retail or in a fast food restaurant, we must make sure that we're diligent with our work. Verse seven says, serve with a good attitude. If there's one thing I think all of us do not like is coming upon an employee that has a bad attitude, it can be a very unpleasant um, encounter. But here as believers, we must have a good attitude. And it's implied that this is always, all the time, even when we don't feel like it, because we are serving as unto God, not for men. This is all about Jesus. So as I do my work, I'm working for God. As I serve in unpleasant places, I'm working for God. Um, and verse eight gives us a promise and an encouragement for our hearts. It says, knowing that whatever good each one does, slave or free, he will receive this back from the Lord. I want to encourage us that the good that we do within our workplaces, if nobody sees it, God sees it. And understand that because God sees it, sees it, excuse me, God is going to reward us. So let's have this heart and mind in us, especially in those hard moments where it feels like we are being overlooked. Um, or maybe even underpaid. And so it goes on to say to masters, to employers, treat your slaves the same way, meaning that let's be fair and just to all those that we work with. Um, goes on to say to treat them without threatening them. Other versions would say without being harsh. Um, why? Because their master and yours in heaven are the same. So for any Christian who's in a position of leadership or authority over people, it is our responsibility to treat those that work under us well. We must treat them with equality in the sense of we shouldn't have favorites and treat one person better than the other. And let's not forget that all our Christian truths and how we respond to people um, is important for us to follow. And I also just want to Read one more scripture for employers. It says in Colossians chapter four, verse one, masters, supply your slaves with what is right and fair, since you know that you too have a master in heaven. Uh, when we think about this, we can think about it in terms of every aspect of the work, whether it's wages, whether it's the environment, whether it's assignments, we have a responsibility because we serve God that we treat our employers 
with what is right and fair. So I want to encourage everybody, wherever you find yourself in this, remember that this work, we do it as unto the Lord. Whether we are a manager or we work under people, whether we're in what may culturally be considered a small or insignificant job to what may be a really significant job in culture standard, remember that we do this for Christ and let's do it well in a way that's pleasing and brings glory and honor to his name. God bless. Mm-hmm.